Hey guys, it's Jacqueline from Nerd Mom's Life, and today we are doing a massive, overwhelming possibly for me, unboxing of what is in my mailbox. This is going to be um, lifestyle, household, books, educational stuff, all kinds of things of what different companies have sent me to look at. If you like these kinds of unboxing videos, do me a favor, thumbs up, subscribe, all the things. And one of the things about this video is if you see something specifically that you're interested in knowing something more about, let me know in the comments and maybe I will do a whole video about it. I will definitely make sure to let you know what I think about them when I, once I try them. So this first thing is from Eco Freaks. Bring your freak on. All I have done is kept these open. That is literally all I've done. I'm not taking anything out. I don't even know what's all in here. So as a matter of fact, I've got a little, little thing here. They have packing material. My poor teenagers, they, they always get to help with all this. So first thing, this looks like I got a clean car bundle auto dispenser with, with koozie and one gallon foaming sanitizer refill. So let's take this out. So I'm going to try not to spend too long on anything. It looks like my box got a little smushed. This is an automatic sanitizer dispenser. Oh, that's awesome. Let's see. Take you out. So yeah, and it looks like it's powered and it is a hand sensor. So you just put your hand under it, which is awesome. I'm assuming that this may be a koozie, but and it's spelled koozie, not cozy. And then we got, oh cool. This is a collapsible funnel to refill. And then um, actually I'm going to have my 15 year old come over and help me because I am recovering from a melanoma surgery in my arm. She says as she's lifting this, and I am not supposed to be lifting heavy things. As you can tell, I'm great about observing that. Um, so we got a funnel and we got this Clean Freak Foaming Hand Sanitizer, 80% ethyl alcohol with aloe, and it's in the outrageous orange scent. So that is cool. Yes, I'm gonna have to try this out. I really like this though because we also have an auto um, soap dispenser by our kitchen sink, and it is perfect when you are cooking and things are a mess. So thank you very much from Eco Freaks. I look forward to evaluating this. Next up is a box. Let's see. Part of this is these come sometimes from PR companies and don't come from the actual company. So it can get interesting to try to tell by the box what this is from. So they email me and and I believe all of these they email me first and I said yeah I'd be interested in checking it out. These are TP kits and this is a 10 pack and it has like everything you need to go to the bathroom which you know is important. I believe it's more than just toilet paper. I believe it's like a wet wipe and some other things like that. I love this idea. One, I love this idea because I've gone to China and I'm a spoiled brat American. When you go to China and many other countries, if you want toilet paper, you need to carry toilet paper because they don't have them in the bathrooms. The other thing is as a kid, my dad always carried a roll of toilet paper when we went on trips, just in case you had somebody who had to go and couldn't wait till you got to another town. For example, from here, if you drive to like Monterey, there's a stretch um, going to Los Banos that's like an hour and there were no bathrooms, especially when I was a kid. There's a few more now, but there were no bathrooms. And so sometimes when you have to go, you have to go. So I love this. There's some going in my car. There's some going in my daughter's car. I'm not a camper, but this would be great if you're camping. I know when my kids went on a hike with some friends, um, being the mom I am, it's like you need to take toilet paper and you need to take wet wipes and you need to take all those things in case you have to go to the bathroom and can't find one. So this is awesome. These are 100% biodegradable too. So cool. Thank you very much. TP kits. I'm trying to see if there's another brand on it. Very cool. Okay. I'm getting a lot of household stuff to start with. There we go. Another box. Um, this is from Pure Sky and Persic. It is indoor exterior, I'm sorry, interior exterior windows. And it's a four piece car cleaner, car cleaner. It says just add water, no detergents needed, which I like that because I was traumatized. My mom got like soap bubbles on her windshield and we couldn't get them off. Like 
you bought like, they bought like tobacco and a razor to try to get them off. It was just, it was a thing. So I'm just always a little scared about putting detergent straight on my car. Um, this looks cool. You get a car interior cleaner, two piece, a body cleaner and a car glass cleaner. Interesting. I look forward to, it looks like you got something to dust the inside and then, yeah, I'm really interested in this. This seems really cool. Okay, next up. Like I said, I literally just cut the tops off of all of these and didn't even really look inside. Yes, seriously, there's a pile growing over there that my son will get to take to the recycling. These are the cutest things. These are from Friendly Fables, and it is a set of four board books, and it is, I was going to say, I think there's a series name, but you got a book that is Heroic Hospital Quest, and they're just so cute. Peter's sick and needs to go to the hospital. At first, he's nervous and scared, but with the help of his family, doctors, and nurses, he summons up the courage and fights to get better. Join him on his heroic quest. And it's, it's very interactive. So here you've got like a little maze that if you're reading it to a kid, you could totally go through and so fun. There's also, and uh, I do love, I have to say these, I think are all written by Alexis Alexander and they, I'm not sure if it's a he or she, but they signed everyone. Oh, Alexis and his family. So he signed everyone, you know, thanks for the support. And I loved this, uh, the, uh, to see inscriptions from authors. I personally do. I have, I don't think you can see it up here, but I have, um, two cubbies of books written by people I know who've signed the books to me. And that's just, it's one of those things I like to collect. Friendly Fables presents farts and, uh, don't fart on anyone is what's written inside. This one is available as a wrap on YouTube which is now killing the junior high school behind the camera. The Dino Wrap book, also available on YouTube. And my new cool school, which as a homeschooler, that would be the living room. But these kinds of things are also great even for homeschool kids because they can understand a little bit more of what everyone else's experience was like. So um, if you want a fuller review on those, it would end up being on Homeschool Hangout. Let me know. Okay, these, I am so looking forward to these and I wouldn't let myself read them until I unbox them on camera. And these are women's history books. This one is Women of Means, Fascinating Biographies of Royals, Heiresses, Eccentrics, and Other Poor Little Rich Girls by Marlene Wagman Geller. My girls are gonna love this. I say that, Inder Jorah will love it too. Um, Can Money Buy Happiness? Find out from some of the world's wealthiest women. And so on. Yes. Um, one of the women who the uh, Lady Cora from Down Abbey is based on is in this book. The woman whose uh, chemist father created L'Oreal, um, Peggy Guggenheim. Uh, the Guggenheim uh, Museum, I believe, was started by Peggy Guggenheim. She was obsessed with modern art and, as this is, and men. So this is not a small child's book, but I don't have small children, so... And the other one is the awesome book of women, Boundary Bakers, Freedom Fighters, Shiro's, and Female First by Becca Anderson. So I love these. This is not something that is just going to be read by the girls in my house. This will be read by my one remaining male student too, because history is important. History is history. And I love these kinds of books often because the other part is you're going to learn a little about a lot of people. And so these kinds of books are so great for school to just kind of give an overview. And some of my favorite history books have been like that. It also means they get there before, get to the point before it gets too boring. So next up, another book. This one looks like it's a little bit more for me and a little less for the kids. And it's Broken and Beautiful, Let God Turn Your Mess into a Masterpiece by Christine Soule. And I say me, in reality, it's also my 17 year old daughter, but a little less school aimed. So this seems really interesting. I read um, all the press releases on these books, but then honestly, it takes a while to get things, and so I don't always remember what they are. Next up, another book. We like books, 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 books. This one I got specifically um, because I know my kids will love it, and um, I'm really wondering if it's gonna hold up. And it's Crank Palace, and it's a Maze Runner novella. So um, the Maze Runner series, they did a series of movies too, and the books, I believe, 
some, if not all my kids have read them. I'm lucky. The one behind the camera hasn't read them, but I believe at least one of my girls has. And so this is from the Maze Runner series. I am really interested to see what they think. It is definitely smaller than the rest of the Maze Runner books. And it looks like 153 pages. So let me know if you'd like a full review on this. Nerd Pie would love to write one, I am sure, as would uh, Nerd Pud too. Enderdurum might if he's got time. Uh, next up is Noteworthy Kids. 50 encouraging notes every child needs to receive. I love these kinds of things. My mom and I may not have had the best relationship, but every once in a while she put a note in my lunch or just write me something. And I still have, I think, all of them. It may have only been a few in my lifetime, but it meant so much. And so these are just single sheets that you can give your kids. You can, you know, people always say put them in the lunch, but we do interact with our children in other places. It's so like this one, change is hard. You've been through a lot of changes recently. It's finally beginning to feel normal again. I've seen you grow a lot during this time, especially as you face some tough challenges. As things begin to settle down, I'm asking God to show you that he's with you in every step of your new journey. I pray that in these days you will see how clearly you will see clearly how wide, how long, how high and deep God's love is for you. And so, oh, I like this one. You were right. That's what the title is on it. You're right. Sometimes we get it right. Sometimes we get it wrong. The feeling is especially true as I'm watching you get it right. I'm proud of you for standing up for what you believe, your willingness to speak up and explain your position and make it the difference. So these are just really cute. Um, if you Like I said, if you'd like to see a fuller review on this, let me know. Um, I'm looking forward to reading them all. So next up, My Mom the Lawyer. This one didn't get taken out of the thing. Is your mom a lawyer? Do you know about the different jobs lawyers do? Read along as kids tell you about their inspiring lawyer moms. Sorry, my mom uh, passed away in November. And she did a couple years in law school. And so I kind of grew up around that a little bit. So it's just very, when I got the description of this, I think, um, as a matter of fact, I haven't included this in a video because it was just too soon for me. So um, it sounded really cute. I love these kinds of books. Um, and it's by Michelle uh, Browning Coughlin, JD, MSW. That's a uh, Juris Doctorate, which is a, a legal degree. And I believe um, maybe a master's in social work. So my mom is a lawyer. Have you ever thought about being a lawyer when you grew up? I like the fact that um, you definitely have a, a racial diversity in here too, because these are like very, this is about my mom and moms look different. And I like that. And so I am looking forward to reading this. Um, yeah, if you'd like a fuller review, let me know. Keep an eye out on Homeschool Hangout. I will probably be doing a book review soon, or a book roundup, I mean, of just kind of all the books we've gotten recently. Okay, this one, another, another envelope. This is The Resilience, a Workbook, Powering Through Adversity to Find Happiness by Katherine Denhauter, PhD. I am a big believer in resilience, if you can be resilient. Um, I just, she is a uh, psychologist with 25 years experience and it deals with resilient qualities. So as she is seen in her most successful clients. So part one summarizes the qualities and part two will help you gain the tools you need for a resilient life. Life has its ups and downs and resiliency can really get you through it. So, okay, next up, it's a book. So surprising. I like books a lot. Okay, this is Adventures with Divot and Switch, Swish in Costa Rica, The Superpower of Courage by Beth Brown, PhD, illustrations by Charlotte Strickland. And this is more than a board book, but less than a novel. Let me see. And one, I like superpowers, courage. And um, the press release really talked about just kind of going through the Caribbean and kind of all that kind of stuff, which is great for kids. I love having books that are all set in different places with different feels and different things versus I think children's books. When I was younger, I remember a lot of those books all being like the same blandness. And when I say that, I mean like, I love Dr. Seuss, do not get me wrong, but I don't know anything about where any of those people were. So um, I like this kind of stuff too. Okay, we've got another board book. You may be going, okay, Jacqueline, why do you accept board books and children's books? 
so much if your kids are older. And part of it is I'm able to look back with an eye and go, I wish this book would have been available to my children, or I wouldn't have wanted my children to read that. And time gives me a little perspective on it. So this one is Lola Koala's Travel Adventures. Who, what, where, and yes, no questions. Written by speech pathologist, Dr. Trinita Ortega Kearney. So I saw this and um, it says, teach your children or student a specific language skill. Teaching children how to summarize and be clear in what is going on is one of the most valuable skills you can teach your children under six. I'm picking a ballpark there. And so often, it, just think about it. The last time you saw a kid just crying all of a sudden, you go running in and you're like, what's wrong? And they don't know what details to give you. I was breathing and then I, I'm like, okay, but is there blood anywhere that I don't see? I need to know. So this is cute. Here's a tip that will surely help. It is also a phrase you can sing. Simply remember who is a person, where is a place, what is a thing. And so I, this kind of stuff I just find so cute. Um, I know it's a board book. Oh, and it's got little pop-ups too. Who sits next to Lola and it's got little pop-ups. Cute. Where you've got a scene here and then you've got these pop-ups. It's a little quiz. Who's sitting next to Lola? So you're going to help them figure out, oh, that is the character sitting next to Lola. I love these kinds of things, even if they seem a little advanced for your three-year-old, four-year-old, because you start ingraining them with knowledge and how to uh, think about things in the world and logic. And I'm a big believer in teaching logic. And so I love this kind of stuff. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, this one. Oh, good. I do have a pair of scissors. I was really looking forward to this, and then we got sick and the holidays and everything. This is Deep Flavors, and it is a kosher, I believe it's a kosher uh, Southern cookbook. I'm looking. Yes. Celebration of recipes for foodies in a kosher style. For those of you who don't know, when I learned how to cook, even though I'm very much a California girl, I learn through Jewish cookbooks and um, the, seriously, so much so that when I moved out, my husband and I went out, I'm trying to see where it is if I can just reach back and repurchase one of my absolute favorite cookbooks that I have. And it's a Jewish cookery cookbook. It taught me how to cook like ingredients, not just recipes, all of it. And I don't cook kosher very often. Um, I can, I have, I know how to keep a kosher kitchen, um, but I just, I saw this and I just was totally drawn to it. So I cannot wait. Celebration of recipes for foodies in a kosher style, deep flavors. Let's see. Ooh, mashed potato pancake frittata. I'm in. I'm hungry. I have not eaten yet today. I'm in. I'm so in. Uh, I just love these kinds of comfort food. I'm a big comfort food kind of person. Uh, and I believe he may be a lawyer. I don't even know that he's a chef. Yes, he's a, after 51 years in general tax and transaction practice as a lawyer and a CPA, uh, he started cooking and doing this kind of stuff. So if you'd like a full recipe, if you'd like to see uh, like some dishes out of it, let me know, let me know in the comments. And yes, I'm trying to get you to talk to me. Yes, I am. It's, it's, it's the YouTuber secret. Okay, so this one is very thin. Okay, this is a mask. I've got a lot of different things about different types of masks. This is, I'm going to assume it's pronounced humankind. It's H-M-N kind. And this is their antibacterial performance mask. And it's made from polyurethane in Korea. So it's, and we are definitely maskers around here with all the COVIDness. Comes out with a bit of a smell. I'm going to assume that it just needs to air out. But yeah, this is like that scuba material. It's thinner because I had dresses made of this that were thicker. And you've got ear holes and it might be that really nice thing because it is a performance mask. So I don't know if that means it's really good for sports. I need to do a little bit more research. I was kind of hoping they'd send me more information with it, but uh, I'll let you know what I find. Okay, hey, the box is getting emptier. Now we're getting to the bigger things. This 
is from Thimble. And I can tell you that there will be a full review of this over on Homeschool Hangout because this is just one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I will not be taking everything out of it because um, whichever child gets to do the video review, we'll probably do it. This is a STEM kit. And I believe it's every couple months. I don't believe it's every month. So I'm gonna take this out. This is what this looks like. And so we'll just poke a little bit around. I see a Seeduino. It's an Arduino compatible uh, MCU board, which um, my child behind the camera is already excited about. Micro USB cam uh, cord. This, so this has 12 projects in this one box. And this is their creator set. Um, so you can go to their site and you can create an account. And they have videos and step-by-step -step blueprints that will help you through the assembly and programming of all the projects. So with this creator set, you'll learn how to make a robot friend, thermometer, doorbell, clapper, 8-bit music composer, intruder detector, analog indicator, LCD backlight disco, Music Machine, Nightlight, Simon Says Game, and Kitchen Timer. Those are cool. And they're saying these are just the 12 feature product, uh, projects that they're telling you how to do. They are sure that your students can do a lot more. So, okay, I, I may take some of this out of the box. Just stickers, always with the stickers, always be branding. So you get this little kit and it's got everything in here. I'm looking in the back and I'm seeing all of your cabling that goes into the motherboard. Ooh, so cool. This is aimed, I want to say, fifth grade to 12th grade. And I really like that because there's a lot of younger STEM kits out there, but there's not as much for my older kids. I have two high school students who are taking college classes. I have an eighth grader who's already in high school sciences. They need something a little more challenging, and this looks like it could be it. So I'm very excited about this. Like I said, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to shoot a video. If they're just going to give their thoughts or if they're actually going to put something together on camera, let me know what you'd like to see. This will be over on Homeschool Hangout. And then the last thing in my box, I've been smelling this whole time. and I'm so excited. I think I just embarrassed my 15 year old. I think he doesn't like it when I smell things because he just put his head in his hand. So this is from charities and so this is how you get it and it is tea i like tea i really like tea i like tea a lot for those of you who follow me on uh, instagram nerd bombs life you will have seen earlier in the week when i made myself a proper tea tray i was using loose leaf and so i made myself a proper pot of tea i took my milk frother in with me into the office and took a mug and I had delightful tea while I was working. It was wonderful. So this first tea, they smell so strongly and so good, is the Blueberry Cobbler. And it is a dessert Rubio's blend with cacao nibs and hazelnut. Um, and it says teas from the road less traveled. So the person behind this is, I believe, like a certified tea person. I know that's not very specific. Teologist. Like, like a teologist, yes. But I don't think that's the term. So for those of you who like tea but aren't like super tea <clears throat> when you hear Rubios, that means it doesn't contain actual tea leaves. That means like when you drink peppermint tea or chamomile tea, those technically aren't teas in the same way. They don't have tea leaves. So this has cocoa, cacao nibs and hazelnut. Should I actually open it and smell it? It, my, I don't think my son wants his, his the living room where he's got to do school for the next few hours to smell like tea. But you know what? He's a child. I'm the grown-up. I'm going to smell some tea. And this is a loose tea, and it is in a plastic bag. Mm. If you like blueberries, this is for you. Let's see what else is in here. That's my last thing, so. Berry Fields Forever, and this is a fruity herbal tea with hibiscus and mixed berries. These, these lids are all taped down with like, it, it feels like painter's tape. So that's coming off pretty easy, as long as I don't rip it. Oh, wow. 
Wow, that is some tea. Now, my 15 year old, he likes tea. And you just look at that, that is just so rich. And so, he likes tea. And he likes like a apple cinnamon and he likes sugar cookie. So, he's not serious. And this last one, okay, that's interesting. Olive and Dingo's Color Changing Tea. Naturally sweet herbal tea with peach, mango, and coconut. Herbal tea is often usually another, that's always in caffeine free. Usually doesn't have a lot, if any, tea tea in it. Maybe some green or white. But it means usually you've got herbs as your tea leaves. Okay, so Olive and Dingo is Portland's favorite clown duo. Okay. And they created a blend for kids. Oh, so my kids might really like this. It's sure to bring a pop of color to your tea parties. Blended lovingly using all non-caffeinated ingredients. Its magic color changing properties are thanks to butterfly pea flower, a Thai herb that when mixed with citrus turns your tea purple. Ooh, that's cool. Oh, I hadn't noticed this. Um, and the Berry Fields Forever is uh, blends to deep ruby. It's got berries, black currants, sour cherries, and hibiscus. But one of the things I really like is they tell you what your proportions should be. So for this color changing tea, it's 12 ounces of water for one tablespoon. And it also gives you temperatures for your water of 200 to 215 and how long to steep. Most people do not steep their tea long enough. A proper cup of British black tea should steep for about five minutes. Green tea, I believe it's three to four. Um, I literally set a timer. And part of it is you get the bitterness, but you don't get the rounding out. But okay, that's my, my little tea soapbox. Um, this one is eight ounces for one teaspoon and three to five minutes. And this one is also three to five minutes and it is eight ounces to one teaspoon. So, But it's only 195 to 208 degrees. So that's a little harder to control, but you just don't let your water get to as much of a boil. So this is everything I got in the mail recently in the last like month. Let me know what specific things you're interested in. Like I said, I will probably be doing a book roundup soon over on Homeschool Hangout and have a great day. Bye.